Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today is exciting here in Belgium with my AMG GT Black Series to drive at one of my favorite race circuits in the world in some pretty spectacular company here in this lineup. We're joining the GT1 Sports Club powered by Curbstone here as part of the CrowdStrike 24 Hours of Spa, which is part of the Fanatec GT World Challenge. And just look at this lineup, starting down from the far end. We have the Praga Bohema, the car that I experienced actually in Slovakia not all that long ago. Next to it, we have the McLaren Senna GTR, the track version of McLaren Senna. Next to me here, we have the Apollo IE. This is my friend Mike's car, the Apollo Intensa Emozioni. I actually drove this car right here at Spa just about a year ago. My car, which I've driven on circuits around the world, is now here for some action at Spa Francorchamps. Next to that, we have the McMurtry Spearling. This is the car that has, well, will decimate records anywhere it goes. The technology behind this is out of this world. And then a trio of the Lamborghini SCV12 Ascensors. These things are basically taking V12 track hypercar to the max. Now it's a special event that they're running here and they've given me the opportunity to join with this beast so we need to get ourselves ready. The weather as you can probably tell is not exactly on side today. I think they're just priming the fuel pumps of something up there and it's going to get very noisy in just a second when they fire that thing up but I suspect today is going to be good fun. We've got a session out on track with all of these cars then we've got a parade lap ahead of all of the actual race cars that are going to be setting off behind us. It was indeed getting ready to start that thing. So, we need to gear ourselves up. That is insanely loud. Get this thing ready, because today I'm driving the GT Black Series here at Spa with the GT1 Sports Club. I've got to come up this way then. As you can tell, loud to the max. We have three of the SCV12 Ascensors. These things are Lamborghinis, track only, Squadron Corsa, brutal race car. That is exceptionally loud from back here. I'm going to run past the back of it. Gosh, I can feel that through my bones. This is the McMurtry, which is a good festival of speed, set the fastest ever hill climb time. Electric fan car. This literally decimates anything in its path. It is so fast. Coming past this way, we have the Apollo IE, the Red Dragon. Look at this, with the exposed carbon bodywork and this red paint. Supported by Esser Automotive in Germany, my friend Mike. Let me get behind the wheel of this here at Spa for a drive last year, which was also a day with Curbstone. The Senna GTR, of course, is the ultimate track version of the McLaren <laughs> track series hypercar, if you will, the Senna. Um, mine recently going up for sale, but this is fantastically fast as well. If I squeeze around this way, we also have the Praga Bohema, which is, well, quite something. This is a road car. Despite obviously looking like straight out of a, a GT Series race experience, you have some luggage storage in the side flanks. You have full carbon tub, obviously, a whole lot of power, and I enjoy driving that at the Slovakia ring. But today, if I squeeze my way back through, it's an opportunity to drive the GT Black Series out on track. GT Black Series being at one point the Nürburgring Nordschleife record holder before the AMG 1 came along of course. My car is on Cup 2s which in rain are not ideal, I'm not going to lie. I drove it at the Nürburgring GP not very long ago and had that experience. We need to play around with tyre pressures and that kind of thing, although saying that in the rain I'm not sure how much point there is. We've extended the front splitter, you can pull that out, pop these in place, gives you that extra two inches, five centimeters or so of front splitter space. Prep for the track, of course, we've got the GT1 Sports Club powered by Curbstone stickers. And if I come round towards the back of the car in here, lifting this up, obviously I've been lucky to drive this at some pretty amazing places around the world, Nürburgring, Kota, uh, this was at Yas Marina, that's the Yas track day, that was the Dubai Autodrome sticker, and obviously Donington Park in the UK, and plenty more. But now it's here at the home of the Belgian Formula One Grand Prix as part of the 24 hours, the CrowdStrike 24 hours of Spa. So let me get all of this geared up, get everything ready, and it's going to be time to head out, probably getting absolutely obliterated by some of these things. If this goes out in the bad weather because of the fan, it can suck itself right down to the tarmac and still set very, very fast lap times. If one of those goes past me, it's going to sound amazing. So I hope that happens. And I also suspect that the Praga Bohemia, which is being driven by Ben Collins, formerly known as the Stig, is also going to fly past us at some point during this session. Let's bring it on. Another SCV-12 just started. Look at the crowds that's forming. Obviously, 
see people hear loud noises, they want to see what it is exactly, that's the green one, but they're getting these all up to temperature, ready for the outing in a moment. These things are just wild. Look at how long the tail section of these cars actually is. So the speed round come past up here. Gosh, I'm feeling that through my bones right now. Literally feeling that. As they prep the cars on wets. Unfortunately, I don't have wets. Right now, I would love some. It is what it is, though. Well, it's time for us to go. The Praga just left. The Senna GTR is pulling out. And I say go, we obviously have to line up. But to be here and to be part of what's really a resurgence in many ways of what the GT1 racing used to be, to pull together all of these hypercars, private cars, manufacturer cars, is what makes this club really special. Um, I've just managed to grab a helmet because obviously I'm traveling. I wasn't necessarily planning on this. The timings just came together too perfectly at the end. That was the Apollo IE starting up next to me. Are they waving me out next? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't know the Apollo IE was heading out. So we will roll through next into the atrocious weather. Absolutely atrocious weather. Can we get around? There we go. <laughs> As we're now going to drive through the paddocks at this event behind all of these cars. Wow, this is uh, kind of cool. Obviously, you've got to give the Senna GTR some space. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. And I should also just say, by the way, that driving a car like this in these kind of weather conditions, we know how it's going to go. It's going to be grandpa pace between understeer and oversteer. I know that in advance. I just have to accept it and roll with it because at the end of the day, <laughs> we're here to have fun. We're here to have fun and enjoy it. And I'm driving behind a Senna GTR on a track day. You know, like, I, 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 I don't really have many more words that are needed than that. So, um, yeah. yeah, here we are, full tank of fuel. We'll get into settings and things when we're ready to go in a moment. Just uh, shuffle, adjust, get comfortable and get ready. This is where we're being guided into the old pits here. We have a bit of a strict plan of what we're doing, where we go, what the order of different things are, because of course this happens around loads of race events. And in front of me down there is one of the most famous sections of racetrack in the entire world. As we roll past GT3 cars, I'm sure GT4 cars, this might even be the GT4 lineup. Obviously the Fanatec GT World Challenge is going to be setting off for the weekend. Oh gosh, right now, <laughs> I've got nerves aplenty. <laughs> We've got wristbands, long sleeves. Normally this is hypercars. Of course, they've invited me to bring the car as kind of a, a one-off special thing, if you will, as part of this preview to what's coming with the GT1 Sports Club and Curbstone. Okay, so we're gonna keep the engine running for sure here. We're gonna put it into sport mode probably do a lap or two, see where we're at, and then go from there, really. Out we go then, pit exit, behind the Senna GTR and the Praga Bohema in my GT Black Series <laughs> during this weekend. We're in sport mode with everything in automatic because, I mean, let's be real, looking at this right now and knowing how famed this circuit is for being a... Uh, little bit hairy should we say i think um yeah that we uh, are going to take this quite easily quite gingerly as we go down the kemmel straight at spa in the gt black series unable to see anything in front i don't know where the braking markers are it's a long circuit seven kilometers or so i've driven here quite a few times before the huayra r the apollo ie a couple of days in my mclaren senna a few days in my 675 lt coupe a few days in my 675 lt spider but we're here with the gt black series even there i was barely on the power and we were already just sliding slipping and sliding away this is really larry let's go up into sport plus <laughs> i just don't even know how to keep the grip. I need to find the wet lines. Thankfully, the cars that have gone in front have kind of made a little bit of a drier section of track to reveal some of that. 
but I'm going to ease into this. Grandpa driving, I apologise in advance, but I cannot take chances with these weather conditions. Plus, I need to drive this car home as we now come to Puon, knowing the speeds that you'd be going through here in uh, dry conditions. <laughs> I mean, a good, like, 70 kilometers an hour faster than this through here at least this is serious bad weather keeping an eye on everything that's around me obviously no sound limits that's the advantage of a, an event like this we don't have any of the Ascenza SCV12s yet I was kind of waiting for them to pop up behind me what on earth is this well, at least I basically have a very wet spa to myself. <laughs> this is an absolute disaster right now. If you've seen when I took this car to the Nürburgring GP track two months ago or so, similar weather conditions. I actually feel like there's slightly more grip right now. But I need to build into it. I mean, here you'd be absolutely herring foot flat to the floor in the dry. Just looking at the massive rooster tail behind me. I think this is also the first time that I've ever done a track day with a crowd. Oh look, there's the Praga Bohema going down the pit lane presumably doing some tyre pressure adjustments. Well, we go and <laughs> tuck in here. It's so insanely sketchy. I'm sure you saw that little wiggle. And there, and there. <laughs> This is, <laughs> I mean, on the straight, I can at least put my foot down. No, I can't put my foot down. <laughs> I wasn't even foot to the floor. <laughs> oh well. You know what the most important thing in these circumstances is? to have a massive smile on your face because being here, being part of it, driving, using the car, that is what it's about. Even if it's a challenge, even if it is difficult, and even if probably my Focus RS would get around here quicker right now than I can in the GT Black Series. I believe in driving cars. I don't believe in garage queening them. I believe in getting them out there, having fun, living for the experience and of course doing whatever I can to share that experience with you guys. We're a passionate group. We love our cars. We love driving. And this is what it's about, even if it's difficult. It's about taking it all in and having a whale of a time. And right now, I know I'm being really, really, really ginger with it, but that's all I can do. I've got to be realistic with this. Oh, look at this! <laughs> An Ascensa SCV12. Well, maybe I have to go around once more then. Just follow him for a minute or so. Listen to that! Yeah, I'm a little bit lost. He's obviously on wet. The funny thing, all of the other cars in this session have wet tyres suited to the occasion and I'm sitting here on Cup 2s. I actually think the Praga might be on Trofeo R's. coming out so that means what's going to happen here I'm going to go up the hill and then very shortly thereafter Ben is going to come flying past me 
<laughs> oh gosh. Well, my private track session is over, but I'm okay with that because now it's um, Ascensia and Praga. <laughs> Oh, the lack of grip is silly. Shall I let him come through? Yeah, let me keep right. There goes the Praga Bohema. Oh, that thing looks cool on the track. Hard to believe that is a road car. That thing in front of me is road legal. You can put a number plate on it, drive it home from your track day, or of course, drive it here at Spa. I cannot. I've got no grip left. It's just understeer to oversteer. And that, yeah, that's my cue to uh, dial it down because I don't want any more of those. Ah, we'll chill out then. Chill out from here to the end. Easy run around Puon. <laughs> Oh boy, well the chequered flag is out, that is going to symbolise the end of this session. I like the new digital system they have here and all the setup actually that comes with curbstone days. I've done quite a few curbstone days over the years. Really well organised, very very nice team as well behind it all. And we coast it around and we'll head into the pit stop here and drive the whole way around in fact ready for our um, next little stint, which is a parade lap. I feel like it's just stopped raining as well, right at the end. Well, this is quite fun. As we come down the uh, pit lane to be lined up here. Down we go. Apollo AE is out, SCB12 is out. Not entirely sure where I should go, but I'm going to hover. Well, this is all happening. The cars are lined up here for the grid walk, which obviously means AMG GT3 is coming past because all the cars now leave the pit lane to come out and line up here as well. Um, I'm here just for the time being. I'm going to be shuffled around. We've got all the trolleys of tyres and things coming out. The GT1 cars, GT1 sports club cars, all here. Uh, it's going to be loud, it's going to be noisy, but I'm going to squeeze out through this way. The R8, R8 safety cars up at the front, safety car, leading car, safety car, they're being posed. AMG GT3 up the hill. This is madness, this is absolute madness. Super cool to be able to be here. 296 GT3 as they all come through. Oh, those gear shift snaps in the Porsche. It's insane. This is super cool. The deep grumble of the AMG GT3 because they run the old NA engines rather than the bi turbo you can find in mine. And then the Fizz. 296 GT3, they look cool. <laughs> oh, this is the best. Standing right here. McLaren. Oh, what a place to be. Lambo. The R8 sounds nuts. It is time to head back. So I think we're following the safety car. We're basically being lined up, all of the cars starting to lead the parade. So we are the front car leading the parade of the GT1 Sports Club cars, plus the entire pack at the race. The entire CrowdStrike 24 Hours of Spa is behind us for the actual race. And we're gonna be leading this off for the parade lap. I think we're starting to move maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Getting waved forwards for the photos. <laughs> I don't really know, but we just go with the flow. Right, away we head. Senna GTR behind. 
the Senza SCV12 behind that. <laughs> Leading the parade at Spa Frankishall. The view behind, if you can see backwards through the cage right now or through the mirror, the view behind is so cool. Senna GTR, the Senza V12 through the GT Black Series wing. is getting poppy and bangy. I thought this was going to be like a 50 kilometer per hour parade around. But instead I've got a Senna GTR right on my tail. We're under yellow flag conditions so obviously no um, overtaking. We are certainly getting a decent pace through here for the parade <laughs> as we come around towards the end and the end of my driving for today. Kind of lost everybody behind, in fact. My days. We have done it. We have been part of this, had the most amazing time, and we're now back into the pit area. <laughs> okay, I don't, don't know where we go next. I don't know what happens now. Oh, wow. This is the familiar pit entry, what I'm used to driving on track days here. So thank you to the uh, Audi R8 safety car for leading us back. I guess that car is starting from the pits, for whatever reason. It's all empty now with all the cars on the start line, ready for the race. The cars are parking up, listen to that. Borrowing the learnings and technology from Nissan, very familiar six cylinder sound from the R35 GTR. Obviously all of the cars being parked lined up correctly right now. It's not every day you see these kind of things out on track been lucky to ride in this very car this very exact one as it happens so that gets parked there this gets parked next and the Apollo IE is going to try and go there but it's going to be a challenge the race is now underway but I'm being distracted by some of the cars around us this is the safety car that you might know of the GT Black Series in fact looking at this up close and personally you've got the extra antenna things up on the roof come round towards the back and take a look at this on the rear spoiler this is where you have those lights, the safety lights on the underside of the GT Black Series spoiler, along with, I presume, cameras. That's what you must have mounted on there. Maybe sensors, that kind of thing. Lots of differences to the regular road car. Different tyres, I notice, as well. Around the front looks fairly similar from what I can see. Certainly, obviously, the illuminated number plate section. Anyway, sun out on the bright red of that. We have the new C63S e-performance, the hybrid 2-litre turbo. Then we have the AMG1, obviously big fan of the AMG1, this is the full livery, the painted stars to match the Formula 1 car, goes without saying, F1 engine in a road car, AMG1, absolutely crazy to think that their portfolio includes this and all the AMG GT3s that we've seen out on the track as well, and obviously many and other car in the full lineup, the painted star on the front, that looks really nice, can't wait to spend some more time around AMG1s. Then opposite, we have the new Mustang GT3 plus the new Mustang GT4. Now the GT4 car is based on the new 7th gen Mustang, effectively the Dark Horse, which will be joining my garage fairly soon. GT4 cars have to share lots of panels and things with road cars, effectively the same footprint, etc. Obviously you've got slick tires, you've got a very stripped out interior, um, but more akin to the road car, whereas GT3 is kind of unleashed significantly more. I mean, look at the size of that wing that hangs out of the rear deck. That's pretty cool. Obviously the bodywork even wider, even more aggressive, even crazier. This is, this thing's mad. Look at it. Look at the shape of this. Look at the lines and the design and styling. Very cool to see those and also the new livery they wear with the Ford over the top of them as well. This has just been launched here. The Maserati MC20 GT2. Obviously MC20 based, the GT2 class. This thing is wide, in fact. If I come around towards the front of it, just to stand back a second, look at this. Look at the shape. Look at the size of this. But obviously with the pretty design elements of the MC20 road car, look at that snorkel over the top. That's quite unusual. Separated, no doubt, the different cooling elements towards the Netuno engine. Obviously, full race spec. Fun to see new race cars being presented here at this event. I've just been tucking the splitter back in. We've loaded up all of our luggage. The car is now ready for the final leg 
back towards the UK to bring it back home after this, well, it's been a month or so on the road for us, but what a way to end it in spectacular fashion with all of the cars that are around me to be back here with the Praga, to have seen that out on track flying past us, to have seen some of the Lambos, the Senna GTR, and to have been part of all of this, the special opportunity to be here with the GT1 Sports Club, powered by Curbstone, part of everything happening today. CrowdStrike 24 Hours of Spa, part of the Fanatec World Challenge. This has been a super cool day, a really, really special day. But I tell you what, the last thing we need to do is to put some air into the tyres to make sure that they're slightly back, or I can do that at the petrol station on the way out from here, because it takes around, I want to say, six or seven hours to get back home from here. So we're going to have a quick chill in one of the hospitalities, grab a drink, watch some of the racing, and then hit the road and wrap it up for today. We've been leading the parade at the 24 hours of Spa. Head needs to get around that one for a moment. Big thanks to everybody at Curbstone and GT1 Sports Club. What an amazing day it's been. I also need to make sure I find a sticker to put in the boot of that before we go anywhere. That is crucial. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.